back to Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm gonna to do a quick sketch for you, a little bit of ink and wash, and that's gonna be it. Yesterday I was working on a video, and it was like an unboxing video, and it was so bad that I, I had to stop it. But I did wanna point out a couple things that I got um, recently. Because I've been doing so much, um, excuse me for being off camera here, because I've been doing so much uh, nature journaling, I wanted to share with you a few of the books that I did get. Um, and one of them is this Wildflowers in Michigan book, which is an awesome book. If you live in Michigan, I don't know if they have them for other states, but this one, uh, the author does Birds of Michigan, Mammals of Michigan, Trees of Michigan, Birds of Prey for the Midwest, <coughs> um, Reptile Amphibians of Michigan, and Fish of Michigan and Rocks and Minerals of Michigan. Now I have the birds on my Kindle and then I have this book. And I wish I would have got the other book on uh, paperback. But another book that I got that I was really excited about, I'm really bummed about. I even got the hardcover because I was so excited about it. It was called The Field Manual of Michigan Flora, which is great. These beautiful photos on the front and everything, there's not a dang picture inside the book. Not one. You have to know what you're looking for and look it up and read about it. If you know what a flower is, you probably already know a lot of information about it, right? So why would you need a book? This I was a little bummed about. It was used, but even so. Another one that I got was, uh, because I'm really into butterflies uh, and birds, I got monarchs and milkweed. Uh, moving to my new place, I want to be able to plant a lot of milkweed on my property and some other butterfly attracting type of plants. This one is all about milkweed and it's very interesting because you know if you're familiar with milkweed, if you break it, if you break a leaf off of the stem or you break a stem, you'll see this milky fluid come out. If you touch it, it's very sticky. So um, it's kind of curious how butterflies need that to survive and to build their chrysalis and then eat. But this dog, he always has to start whining the minute I talk on camera. He's not getting attention. But um, it's very poisonous, so it's kind of interesting how this latex type of substance is actually good for the monarch butterfly. Um, but anyway, I thought those were very interesting. Another book, though, that I got that was art-related was this one, How to Make a Watercolor Paint Itself. It's uh, about loose painting, and it's very interesting. When I bought it, I bought it used. I try to always buy very good. Sometimes I'll buy good if, if they have an explanation. This one says very good at the bottom, right? Very good means it's in good condition. The cover's in good condition. There's no writing in the book whatsoever. Look at this book. It is filled with writing, just filled with writing. Writing and arrows all over the paintings and all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to write one hell of a lousy review on this. I was really pissed. Excuse my expression. But, I mean, it's like 40, 40 plus pages, 44 pages or something that have all this stuff on it. This one says grass. Do I really need something that says grass right next to a painting that is about grass? I mean, a tree-covered hill. Really? That person needed to write that on there. I swear, I don't know what possesses people, but this one really bummed me out. Look at all the arrows all over the place. She's highlighted and, and then written. I say she because it looks like female writing, but um, talking about rocks. So she writes rocks and then puts an arrow up to the point where it says, painting with a knife, rocks, please. So be careful when you buy these things. Um, this is the first time I've ever had a problem buying a used book, and they definitely will be hearing about me. That's getting a one-star review, but because that's, that's flat-out lying, and I paid a very good price instead of an acceptable price for that book when it's really an acceptable book, not a good book or a very good book. So I was a little bummed about that. There was another one <clears throat> that I wanted to show you. Oh, I got this one, too. The Kaufman Field Guide to the Nature of Midwest. This one's kind of interesting. 
and it does have photos and stuff, so it's very helpful. There's not a lot of information, but along with the information, it gives the area in the Midwest where you can find these particular things. So I thought it was kind of cool. It does trees, plants, some flowers, some birds, um, bugs, all sorts of stuff. So this will be a good field guide as well. But anyway, let's go ahead. Oh, and one other thing I got was a porcelain palette. I got one like this because I have a plastic one like this that I like and I use quite a bit. So I got one in porcelain. I think it was 10 bucks on Amazon. Very simple. Just, just um, put in your search bar porcelain palettes and you'll find one. So um, I think it was $10.99 or something. It's 11 bucks, whatever. But let's go ahead and get started on the sketch. Now, I've already started the sketch, but I'm going to continue it and finish it. I'm doing some peonies. Um, now, I think I just posted a picture of peonies from my journal, my regular journal, but I'm doing one in my nature's journal, too. So I thought uh, some of you wanted to see me sketching and my process of sketching, which I've already started, but you'll see the majority of it, so... Let me turn the camera around. Okay, I'm gonna try bringing you down a little closer here so that you can see my process. Uh, excuse my nails, they need done desperately. I haven't done them in weeks. So this is the portion that I started and I am using, gotta turn the vase now. I'm using this um, bit of peony that I have from my garden back in the city. I'm going to be digging some of those up and bringing them up north. But I'm just picking and choosing flowers just to put on the page. And that's about it. So um, I'm doing it first in pencil and then I go over it again with my pen. Some of you don't need to do that, but I do. And I like this one, so I'm going to add it in. First starting with the leaf that I can see from the rear because I'm getting sort of a rear view. Actually, I don't like that angle. It's going to get in the way of my flower. So I'm going to change that angle a little bit. I like these pencils. These are the Graphic Gear 1000 Pentel pencils, and you can get them in whatever um, size lead you like. This is the 0.3 lead. I like the 0.3 and I like the 0.5, but that's about as big as I'll go. Another leaf that comes toward me. This is foreshortening. And then there's a leaf underneath it. Okay, and another leaf here. And then we have the peony. Uh-oh, I hear a bulldozer. I bet he's coming down the street to work on my driveway some more. This type of peony is um, very jagged. So I gotta fix that. And then there's a few pieces I can see here like this. There. Okay, and now I'm gonna do a flower which is very jagged too.
This is all I do is I watch, I look at it, I take what I feel is important. If I was to do a botanical drawing, I would probably be exact. But this is just a nature sketchbook. It's not any big thing. This one's wilting a little and I want to bring it back to life in my picture. So I'm just trying to see what I can do here. This comes down like this. Now I'm just kind of improvising a little bit, doing what I want to do here. I'm kind of following it, but not as closely. When I went home to the city, I was feeling a little bit blue, thinking about the neighbors I'm going to miss and watching them go about their days and stuff like that, which, you know, is, I don't know, I never really paid attention before because I was going about my day. I don't spend the day staring at my neighbors, but uh, I found myself doing that a little more the other day, and it kind of kind of threw me for a loop a little bit, and I was feeling sad little verklempt. This is a leaf. I got to try and remember that's a leaf. If I make it a petal, not a big deal, but and that's pretty much it. There's a couple that come out short like this over this a little bit. There. Okay, now I'm going to grab my pen and I can fix all that. And then I'll erase my pencil if I need to. Uh oh, am I out of ink? Nope. I was gonna say, this is a new pen. Some people like to do their inking afterward. I do it before and after. Um, I do the basic outline beforehand because I wanna be able to erase pencil lines that don't belong there. And if I um, don't erase the pencil lines, then I end up with pencil lines stuck under my watercolor and then I can't get it out, you know what I mean? So, now this leaf is wrong. It's on my butt. It's supposed to be over by this leaf that's stuck here. So I'm gonna bring this down like that and make the leaf like that. And then this bud comes up, comes to a point. Okay. And then there's another little leaf behind it. Actually, that point might be a, nope, that is a point. I had to turn it and look at it. Should be a little bit rounder, but I can fix that <clears throat> when I do my final sketching. This is supposed to be a leaf also. Where is it? What was I sketching? Oh, that. I'm getting a different view of it here. Let me actually like that view a little bit better. I've already got ink there, so I, I may be able to, oh, it could be seen at the end. Did I do that one? Yeah, it looks like I did. Sorry, that's my watch dinging. I must be on the hour. Yep, it is. 
Okay. I'm having trouble seeing this. I gotta look at it again. Oh, okay, this is a leaf that comes out. See, now I'm not on my pencil anymore. I'm just doing, redoing it a little more accurately, which is why I do things in pencil first because I can change what I'm looking at if I'd like to. It's basically my, my sketching process here. Kind of messed that up a little bit, but um, I'm trying to hurry so that I don't make this video too long. The leaves that come off of the peony itself are a little more jagged than peony leaves are, which are very shiny, kind of rounded leaves, oval leaves. And then that was supposed to come out like that. Taking it out a little bit more. There. I want to do these smaller ones first because I put them in last and I don't want to cover up, <clears throat> excuse me, cover up that petal. So I want to make sure that I save that. giving these a little more character. Now these are white peony, but I'm gonna make them a little more pink. These have white with pink centers, and I'm not gonna do it exact. Okay, so now I have my basic sketch down. Now I would take my eraser And I'm just going to get rid of these excess lines so that my watercolor isn't going to make them adhere to the paper. And that's basically my sketch. Now, I'll go ahead and put on my watercolor, and then I'll go in and do more of my sketching. So I'm just going to grab my little water brush, my art tool kit with my water brush and my... Uh, little business card palette. It's double-sided. Those are the colors that I have. They're all Daniel Smith. So, let me grab, oops, let me grab that. Alrighty. I'm gonna grab my little water bottle here and spray these a little bit too. Since I'm using a water brush, um, it's nice to spray these first. I don't know if that sap green is Daniel Smith. It seems a little bit light, so I'm adding some hooker's green to it. A little olive green, I'm mixing it all together. If I get outside my lines, I don't worry about that at all because I can fix it with my pen later. There's going to be a lot of sketchy lines on my watercolor. Okay, was that a leaf? Yes, that was a leaf. And so is this, but it has a pink edge. Okay, 
Should have started over here first because I'm a lefty. I don't want to drag my hand across my um, paper. This also had some pink on the edges. I hate using a water brush, especially with this book because it's a little lighter weight paper. I don't want to soak my paper. And it's hard to control the water on a water brush sometimes. Pentels seem to be the best, I think, for water brushes, but um, but still, I prefer a regular paintbrush. I'm taking some ultramarine blue here, and I'm just sticking that on here and there where my leaf would be darkest. Trying to catch it while it's still wet. I watched a weird movie on Netflix last night. If you want to find, want to watch a movie, you may have seen it. It's been out a little while, but I think it's still on their new release list. It's called Jonathan. Many of you may have seen it already, but a uh, very interesting movie. Kind of the take on a guy who has two humans inside his body, and they each get 12-hour shifts in his body. One goes by Jonathan, the other one goes by John. And um, it's just very interesting, the whole story and how it ends. Um, it's an interesting ending too <laughs> have to say but okay now I want to use some quinacridone magenta for my pink I'm just going to mix that over here on the side and I want to put a little bit on my leaves the certain leaves that have it I believe that was all of them. Oh, this has a little bit here and there. It's strange. Okay. I'm just going to add a little to this one because I'm getting carried away. All right, now I'm gonna, I wiped my brush to make sure I have the green off. I'm gonna dilute this a little more and then I'm gonna take my darks. And then I wipe my brush off and I'm gonna go in with my wet brush and just pull that in. So it's not one solid color through the whole thing. And I can wipe up extra um, water. I keep dabbing this on my rag and wiping up extra water from the water brush. That's pretty much it for that. And now this was a white peony, but they have pink centers, pretty dark pink centers. So I'm just going to put this in here and there. I'm taking it straight from the palette so that it's nice and dark. I'm dry brushing, not dry brushing, but I'm doing wet on dry here. And now I'm wiping my brush off again, and I'm going in and I'm wetting. I'm going to take a little pink, so I have a little pink on my brush. Wiped that off. I'm going back in. I'm just doing this very quickly. I want to catch this before it dries because quinacridone colors are staining, very staining, and they won't move. See, I'm scrubbing, and it's really not moving a whole heck of a lot. 
Now I'll be going over this with pen as well, like I said. Now this other one is pinker because it hasn't opened yet. Okay, so that's it. Now, I just let that dry. The green is already dried. So I set my water brush aside. I'm done with my color. And I'm going to go back in with my brush. Oops, I think it was not dry. Actually, I need to add some big leaves, too. I forgot about that. I wanted some peony leaves, so I'm just going to add them. Okay, then I need my, tried to put a cap on that, I need my green again. <clears throat> Just wet that a little bit so that this will work in fast. I went over the edge on that and I'll fix that later. These leaves are very dark. They got a lot of darkness on them. Just some ultramarine blue. Okay. All right, so I'm done with that. Now I'm gonna go ahead with my pen and I'm gonna start re-sketching over. I'm gonna just start on the stems because they are the driest. I'm gonna have my light source coming in from the side. So this side I'm making a little bit darker. Putting in some scribbles and hash marks. I don't worry about neatness on this. I just let the pen do its own thing. I darken the areas that are in shadow a little bit more than I would other areas.
meantime, everybody remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Take care. Bye-bye.